Good day YouTube, this is the day 4 of the Game Engine series and today we will talk about Delta Times and why does a Game Engine need Delta Time. So let's go to our whiteboard and let's see, suppose in our machine uh, my, my CPU is like really weak and my game runs at 60 frames per second. So that means for every second we render 60 frames and that's why we render first frame until the 59th the 60th frame so let's suppose that we're moving a thing one unit to the x-axis in the positive x-axis we're moving a thing one unit on every frame so if the game is running at 60 frames per second that will end up in this thing moving 60 units per second okay now let's suppose that I have a operating I have a CPU that's even more powerful and I can have like 144 frames per second. So that means if we move one unit every second, that means we're gonna move 144 units every second. So you see the problem in this machine we were getting like 60 units per second and here we're getting 144 units per second. So now, if your system is even more absurdly powerful, it can have 1000 FPS and this thing will run a thousand units after a single second. So now you see the problem that if you're getting 60 FPS, then your system will make this move 60 units per second. And if your system is getting 144 FPS, then it will make this move 144 units. And if there is some other FPS, then it will move, make it move that much units. So this is like platform dependent i mean system dependent so how to make that independent of the machine and for that we use something called delta time now delta time is just a difference between the time it uh, it was when we started rendering the fr frame and then what was the time after we ended rendering the frame and if we subtract this value by this value we will get the delta time and that is all delta time is and then we multiply these units by delta time and you'll find yourself that you'll get a similar value for any amount of fps which will be like one unit i guess because delta time for this will be one divided by 60 or something which is like 0 0.067 for this it will be 0 0.00 Six, nine, and if we multiply that by 144 we get around 1 and here also we get around 1 so that is all this is actually the time it took to render this frame which is in milliseconds and that is how it's done so let's go and implement that but before that we need to have a new file we'll call this time.h and we'll make it like unity has done it so if you go to the reference of Unity, you can. I really like this because I worked with Unity Game Engine and made some games. I really like the idea of just accessing it directly and without having a time class object. So the things that we're going to take for now is the delta time, the unscaled delta time, the scale time, time scale, which is like if you want to freeze time, you can freeze time. And the time which will be like the current time of the frame multiplied by the time scale. And uh, then there is real time since the startup, which keeps on adding up. So this is like zero at the start of the game. And after that, it increases by uh, the, the delta time, which is unscaled, which is not multiplied by the scale. So that's all we have to do. So let's just start editing our CMake file. And actually, let's just make a new project because I really don't like this because this is in another bin folder and let me tell you the problem with this so we have our project right now in the bin folder and uh, when we open the project we can see all the files but they're just like not in this structure in src core platforms because uh, it's just having those files in the project but we cannot see in the same structure so that's why we will have the build things here itself so let's just delete this project and let's add another file because we already included it so it should be here so we will build it here in this directory itself. 
So now you see that we have the SRC folder and everything is really well defined in their own project, in their own folders. So we want delta time and all of these things, but we want everything to be static. And at, also at the same time, we don't want the application. We have not made an application class yet. We are just planning everything in the engine yet. But in the next video, we're going to make an application. So we don't want the application to be able to change these values. Anyhow, that's why we're going to keep these static. And these can only be changed from the engine class itself. So we'll have the, the engine class as a from class of this class. And we also don't need any constructors, so I'll just delete all of those. So now you see how we're making this, and I'll make all the rest of the variables just like this. So now we have all of our time class, but we also need one thing, like uh, in the upcoming episodes, we're also going to have a logger. and we can have just a simple helper function that can just print the date and time in a string format. I mean, that can just uh, give us return the date and time in the string format and we can just print it. So that's going to be a really helpful utility and it's uh, like, it's sane to define it in this time class. So that's what we're going to do. So we get the local time and we print all of the output to the string stream and then we just return the string from that string stream. Now we also want us to change these values from our engine class so that's what we're going to do. And also these are just a static variable so they are just the declaration and not the definition itself so we have to define some variable values of these and uh, I just want to have a single time h file that's why I'm just going to define all of the val default values here. So now we have to change all of these values from our engine class itself and let's just do that. Here we will include our time class and we also need the chrono for working with time and getting the delta time and all of these stuff. Let's just have a private float in our engine that will set us like the starting time for our application. So now we get the start time at which our game started, game engine started, and we're using time point cast. These are all like standard chrono thing, and this we're using microsecond, which was we need a precision of three, even if we are talking about milliseconds. So uh, we just don't want like just uh, the value. We just don't want the value ending at a millisecond. We need it to be microsecond, so it's like more precision, and we get to know more things. So times in C++ is just a thing uh, where we can start counting time from and then we get the count of it and then we divide it by all this uh, 1 raised to the power 6 because we need the time in seconds. We're storing this entire time in seconds. So let's get the time now before we start doing all of the updates. So let's get the time and then let's get the time after we ended up with all the updates and then we subtract those two times and we get our delta time because we're storing delta time in milliseconds that's why we're dividing this by thousand so here we say that the real time since the startup is like the end time of this frame and uh, i mean the end time at which the frame ended and then we divide this by uh, one raised to our six because uh, this converts it into seconds and minus our start time and this gives us the real time since the start up in seconds and then we just multiply that by our time scale which gives us the time and then we just increase the frame counter by one so this is everything for our time class and we can just debug all the things if they're working by printing all of these values so for testing, let's just say that our time scale is zero and our game is a stop. That's how Unity does it. So you can see that everything is increasing. This is the time format and actually fucked up here. This is the time format. This is the delta time, which is zero because it's multiplied. But the unscaled delta time is all right. It gives us how much time it took, how much milliseconds it took this frame to render. And then our time scale, we set to zero and the time and the real time since startup but we missed up on one thing and that is we want the user to be able to change the time scale so that's not gonna be just something that is like 
read only we can also change that so for that we can just have set time scale and get time scale actually no need for setting and getting we can just have time scale right well now all the things are working we just need to push our project to github and before that we need to make sure to ignore all of these files because right now if you will just push it get ignore doesn't have it so it will just push all of these things to our project so let's just make sure that these don't go so we also have all these files and uh, uh, here you can see that uh, we didn't add any other file that was from here so that means that our git ignore file is configured successfully and let's just push all of this thank you so much for watching this video hope you all a good day take care and uh, let's just check if i don't know why i'm naming everything mini 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 okay